Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today I've finished up my Navy SEAL dev group. This is from the starter kit for the uh, Spectre Operations game. So I'm going to show you a way fast and dirty paint a squad of guys so the whole uh, team here uh, within one day. So this is a uh, tabletop ready. I'm going to use this guy as an example of how I did it. So I primed him Xandri Dust. I'll be using primarily Army Painter paints. So I've got Army Painter Oak Brown, Skeleton Brown, Uniform Gray, Desert Yellow, Barbarian Flesh, Matte Black, and Matte White. I also use some Games Workshop um, Sterling Mud, Reichlin Flesh Shade, and Nolan Oil. And I also use some Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II. So while I'm painting this guy, I'll be painting these guys in between the sessions. Just so you can do this squad out in one day. So let's go ahead and get started on them. To start, you can see I've mounted the model on the base, surrounded it with some green stuff to kind of blend it into the base, make it smooth, and I primed it Xandri dust. Now the first step going to make, and this is a long one, so I'm going to take some sterling mud here, and I'm just going to spread it around, get this texturing out of the way, and I don't want to touch the boots with it, and I tend to do this uh, before I go to bed, or go to work or something. Give it a good amount of time to dry. Sand and uh, Elmer's glue, PVA glue, work just fine too. Now this is all dry, so I'm going to take some Army Painter Oak Brown. We're going to start on the camouflage. Now camouflage is kind of tricky here, so. I've got my very fine tip, so a medium layer brush, it's got a good tip on it. So what I do is I just pick a spot here, and I start making shapes. And one of my favorite shapes to uh, make is I draw like a little vertical line, kind of wiggly, and then like a little Y under it. Now when you do Sometimes I'll make like an H, but let's start here so you can see there's a patch. So we know they're in the cloth. That same camo line went go over that uh, pocket here. So I make like a bunch of these little Y's on here. And make. Up through that, I'll make the Y face the other direction there. We're just trying to get it battle ready. Trying to do some of the multi cams is just a pain. You're really not going to see it when you're standing like four feet away from your model. So the idea here is we're trying to get an abstraction of what the multi cam would look like. So I want to do this pocket. So I'm going to do. The brush is too wet, it's thinning the paint out. I don't want too much paint on the brush. Of course this happens while I'm filming. So, what I'm going to do is keep repeating that shape, and I normally reverse the Y's, sometimes get that H in there, what I mean by that is I connect those two lines, and then you can turn your model, do those, sh do those shapes all over again, put sideways.
You can see there, Kim is starting to come together. It'd be boring to watch me do all those, so let me finish that up and we'll skip ahead. So you can tell I did a quick once around the model there, doing the oak brown. And now I'm going to switch to Army Painter Skeleton Bone. And what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. I'm not paying attention to where the brown is. Because when whenever I drive by people wearing the desert multicam, it always seems like there's three colors in there. A really light color, a really dark color, and then a color in between. So our sandry dust serves as that in-between color. So we'll let the uh, oak brown and the uh, skeleton bone do is they provide the variation in the color. Oh, the sand one I just put on little thinner stripes because that's how it always looks to me. So I make the same shapes, make a little Y's. Uh, I guess Y's laying down on their side. Remember, you're not trying to make it look perfect. You're trying to paint six guys in a day there, which is possible if you put start early enough. Let's see how it's coming together. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to use the skeleton bone to paint the base. So all my bases are painted skeleton bone. And that kind of matches their camo to the surrounding. So narratively it makes sense for the model. And I should point out that for the boots, um, the utility belts and uh, the armor, the backpacks, helmets, we're not doing anything too. And what happens is if you do everything in camouflage, it'll get into a samey samey blob. So we're just not going to paint camo on those so you can, you know, pick them out on the model. Here's a little variation. I'll go ahead and finish this up and then we'll be back. Yeah, we can see that our model is coming together. So you can see we're starting to blend the pattern. And if you can just imagine him far away, it starts to work. We're not quite done yet. Let's take some Army Painter Uniform Gray. And I squeeze them out on my palette. What I'm going to do is the magazine. I'm going to paint gray. You know what? I think I'll spice it up a little bit. Make the handle gray. There. That way he'll look different from his squad mates. I'm sorry, his boat. Whatever. Excellent. Now I'm going to finish up that gun. I'm sorry, his weapon system with some desert yellow. And this will be just the rest of it that we didn't paint gray. Smoothly glide the brush down. You don't have to perfectly block it in because since everything's supposed to be desert kind of colored, 
one of the next steps we'll just kind of all blend this in so it looks camouflaged. And hold this base down because it keeps popping out. Gun built, gun bent a little because it kept dropping him. Now we'll use some um, Army Painter Barbarian Flush. And we're going to do his hand. Because if you notice, his glove is actually hanging off his belt right there. So we're going to say this hand's exposed. And of course we'll get the exposed skin, trying to avoid hitting the chin strap of his helmet. Next up will be some Army Painter Matte Black. And I am going to use this on his left hand glove the glove that he has tucked into his belt here and he has some sunglasses now you can see right here our model looks pretty good here you can imagine you take him far away. Looks like he's got camouflage on. Okay, but we want to add a little depth to him. So we're going to take some Reichlin Flush Aid. And I'm going to take a brush that's been beaten to hell. And I'm just going to slop a little Get a lot of it off. Then we'll get some on the base here too. That'll blend them together. All right. Now, so now I can use the flush shade over the weapon system. I've done that before, but if you wanted to make it stand out a little bit more, take some Nuln oil. And take a finer tip brush and I'll just run it right down next to it. There we go, now we're gonna let that guy dry for a long time. So you see our wash is dried, and you see this really comes together quick when we do it this style. And when you combine the base with that, um, you can tell the figure, even with the camouflage. If you're four feet away, you say, okay, he's camouflaged, he kind of blends in with the base, but enough to tell that there's a figure off when you're doing gaming. Because you're doing this subtle dance between noticeability and actually showing off a good figure. So now what I'm going to do, and um, a lot of cases, you could just stop right here. Looks good enough. Um, but let's say we want to do a little bit more. I'm going to take some Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II. I love this for desert environments. So I have a brush that used to be nice and pointy. 
and when it started to die, I cut it down until it was kind of like a dry brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of that beige. I've got a little piece of paper here, camera. What I'm going to do is there's those parts we didn't hit with uh, the skeleton bone. So what I'm going to do is just kind of do a tiny, very precise dry brush on his shoes there. And then I'm going to hit, just moving at an angle. Doesn't matter if it hits his skin, it'll kind of give him a dusty look. I got wooden bases, and hey, my paint handle does not like them. There, and so that makes this utility gear. Let's hit some of the pop out a little bit more. So let's hit the glove, so you can see some of the character there. Again, it popped out. Okay, so we got that. Now let's talk about how we're going to finish this guy up. Because remember, we're at the stage where at any point you can quit. So I got Desert Yellow. Remember, I did this on the weapon system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sharp, pointy brush. Good. Dip it in that desert yellow, and I'm just going to run it the edge of the tip of the brush against just some of the raised edges. And then I'll make the weapon system pop out a little bit more. Of course, we can do the same thing with the uniform gray, create a little bit more contrast here. You can see this is coming together rather quickly, so we'll just put a little dot there. Right there. So I see his rifle stand out a little bit more. And now, where did I put it? Ah, there it is. We are going to get some matte white. And normally I don't like using something this bright. But what my thought is. I'm going to take the sharp and kind of like I did with the desert yellow. I'm going to turn my guy upside down, hold the base so he doesn't pop out. All right, maybe I'll hold him right side up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little reflective dots in his ray bands. make them look kind of similar. There we go. He's got some shine from his Ray-Bans there. Excellent. Now, so, a couple hours. So I paint the rest of the squad while I'm doing this guy. That goes pretty quickly. So one day, a couple hours, you can be all done. And now, the rim of the base, I normally paint Bugman's Glow, but you're going to want to make a choice, whatever, to match your board there. But otherwise, I think we are done. So thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. We'll see you next time.